We have got a lot to talk about when it comes to fashion this month. I am back with this series that I did last year. We go through fashion news, what you need to know about, the hot new items, hot new launches, everything. Links to specific items will be below or in the shopping prompt. Kicking it off with fashion news. Okay, men's fashion week happened this month. Uh, a couple of shows in particular to really talk about. The first one being Gucci. This is the first Gucci show without Alessandro Michele. This is entirely by the Gucci design team until they find whoever the successor is going to be. On the day that I'm editing this, it actually has been announced who the new Gucci creator director is, and it is Sabato Dasano. Let's see what he's got for us. We really saw something very different from Gucci, very much in line with what, you know, it seems to be caring their parent company wants from them, which is something a lot more simple, a lot more pared back, a lot of basics. It'll be interesting to see what Gucci women's looks like next month as well, if it follows this same sort of you know, line of design. And a conversation that's sort of been happening throughout Men's Fashion Week is, is this a part of sort of re recession core or recession chic that is coming for us with the looming recession? Are we moving to, you know, more sort of classic basics looking pieces? I might do a whole video on that. Let me know if you're interested in that and uh, theories and whatnot. Now on the other side of the spectrum with Men's Fashion Week, we had something like Louis Vuitton. I did a whole video on that, that will be linked below. But it was even like the set design, it followed this whole coming of age story, Rosalia performed, and it really played into that world that Virgil created for Louis Vuitton men's. It's nice to see that carrying on. Also, it wasn't just men's uh, menswear that was shown during Men's Fashion Week. We saw a lot of sort of co-ed collections, ones that I particularly liked. Casablanca had some really great pieces. Um, Ludovic Saint Seurat. Also kind of leaning into a little bit of that like Blue Marini Y2K aesthetic. That's a brand that got a bit of a cult following and all of that and I think that we'll be hearing more about them this year. Guys if you're new here my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays so if you like luxury fashion then you're gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Okay, now let's talk about Couture Week. Following Men's Week, we have Couture Week. One of the most highly anticipated shows is Schiaparelli, and boy did they give us stuff to talk about for this show. Number one, Doja Cat turned up encrusted in 30,000 Swarovski crystals, painstakingly applied by Pat McGrath and her team, and you could not miss her. She looked... This is the thing, this isn't something that like either of us are gonna create in our real life because in the back of my mind I did go, oh my gosh, that will be satisfying and also really quite a feat to take off at the end of the day. But it reminds me of like, you know, the stunts that Lady Gaga used to pull. And I really, I love it. it you, you know, it's interesting, it's exciting, it's artistic and all of that. Now, back to the actual contents of the show, the animal heads. Kylie Jenner turned up in a black sort of velvet dress that had this huge lion head just sort of, you know, stuck on the on the side of it. And then during the show, we saw three of these. We saw a very similar lion head dress. We saw a snow leopard. We saw a she-wolf. The whole sort of theme of the show was Dante's um, comedy of, what is that? The, the, the something of comedy. The, com it's, the Inferno is one of them. And each animal was supposed to represent like one is lust, one is avarice, one is envy. These were made from resin and foam. And I thought it was really interesting. Skia Pirelli showed us the behind the scenes of how they made that on their Instagram and all of that, because it's fascinating. And then the faux fur part of it was made of silk and wool. This really divided people because some people looked at it and were like, oh my gosh, that's like really interesting innovative and, you know, impressive. And other people looked at it and thought this glorifies trophy hunting. Following all of this, PETA, the animal rights organization, came out um, and described the designs as fabulously innovative and that we encourage everyone to stick to 100% cruelty-free designs that showcase human ingenuity and prevent animal suffering. Also, during Couture Fashion Week, we had Miss Sohi's Couture debut. She did a great job. Valentino, 
what are you up to? Because they've had this issue for spring summer 2023. I don't know why they're doing this, but the shoes that they're providing for the models aren't necessarily, and this happens in fashion shows in general, they don't necessarily like have your size. So you are having to either, you know, pretzel your foot in such a way to fit, you're a 39, you're trying to get your foot into a size 34, or you're here with like that much hanging off the back. It seems as though, but the thing is, is that I've never seen these issues so obviously as with Valentino. So Valentino, spring, summer 2023, the poor models were really like suffering down the runway. And the same thing has happened at Couture. And this time it was um, Kristen, oh gosh, what's her last name? I think it's McNamaney. Really prestigious, like she's been doing this for a while. And she was clearly struggling in the shoes. She fell down, she took the shoes off and you could see her frustration. Victor and Rolf did an amazing, like really whimsical and magical Couture show. And just the innovation, the craftsmanship behind these pieces is really really impressive right leaving the shows gucci removes all rabbit felt products so back in 2017 gucci released a statement saying that they will not be using fur anymore um in any of their designs lots of other brands have followed suit but i believe if i'm right they were one of the first they launched their lunar new year collection it is the year of the rabbit happy lunar new year to those who celebrate and as part of this, they included a hat, I believe, that was made out of rabbit felt. What is the difference between rabbit felt and rabbit fur? Apparently, fur is when the fur is still attached to the skin of the animal, and the rabbit felt, I believe you get that by brushing the animal and it's the, the hair that falls, right? Now, they also said that rabbit felt is, is a co-product derived from the food supply chain in European farms. But they've since removed that rabbit felt product. I think that people thought these two things are too similar. What happens in the first Monday in May? The Met Gala. We have got the official theme announced. We, do, we did have an idea of what it was before. And also we've now got who the co-chairs are going to be. So, 1st of May is the first Monday in May this year. And the co-chairs are Dua Lipa, Michaela Cole, Penelope Cruz, and Roger Federer. The main sponsors for the Met Gala this year are Chanel, Fendi, and the Karl Lagerfeld brand because the theme is Karl Lagerfeld, a line of beauty. And Karl Lagerfeld was the creative director of Chanel and Fendi. Now, there has been a bit of, um, you know, people aren't necessarily happy about the fact that this is the theme because when Carl was alive he uh, made some very controversial statements around a lot of things. Ones that really sort of stuck in my mind are like fat phobic comments, things like that. It will be interesting to see what how people rise to this theme. So are we going to see a lot of people dressed as Carl, like in his style, I'm thinking white shirt, I'm thinking fingerless gloves, I'm thinking tie, that kind of thing, a skinny trouser. Um, or are we going to see them sort of take maybe some of his iconic looks from Chanel and Fendi or have those as inspiration? So it'll be interesting to see how the how this is interpreted, interpreted on the red carpet. In 2021, Andre Leon Talley sadly passed away and his collection is being auctioned off at Christie's in February. Being the iconic fashion editor that he was, this collection is crazy. You've got luggage, loads of sunglasses, art, like Andy Warhol art pieces, you've even got like, speaking of Karl Lagerfeld, Karl Lagerfeld drawings of Karl and Andre, you've also got his fabulous floor length robes that he came to really be known for. You've got Birkins, you've got Murakami, you've got jewellery. It's being auctioned off by his estate and the proceeds of this will go to benefit two causes that he chose to support while he was alive. I hope I pronounced these right. The Abyssian Baptist Church in the city of New York and the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church in Durham. There's going to be in-person live and online sales. The live sale is at Christie's in New York on the 15th of February and the online sale the 16th and 17th of February. Do you remember about a year ago, I spoke about Hermes versus the Meta Birkins, right? So Mason Rothschild is the artist behind Meta Birkins. What is it? It's a collection of NFTs that are, that use the Birkin likeness um, and are done in sort of various variations of the bag. Don't ask me about the ins and outs of NFTs and crypto and all of that. I 
straight over the head. Basically, Hermes sued him. The trial has now been set uh, beginning on the 30th of January. Hermes is basically taking him to court on the basis that he's using the intellectual property and the trademark of the com uh, of Hermes. Now, his sort of um, rebuttal to that is it's art and art is protected under the First Amendment rights. Basically, it doesn't count for like, I, think, I don't know. So apparently this is gonna be a big case as to whether or not sort of NFTs are regarded as art and therefore exempt from things like this. Let's see. Moving into new and noteworthy. Now, usually I put in a load of collabs here and there's not that many collabs. One straight off the bat that you know about, Louis Vuitton, Yayo Kusama. If you don't know that this is happening, do you have access to the internet? Because let me tell you, the worldwide pop-ups for this collaboration have been impressive, but very, very over the top. I mean, one of them, I think it's at Harrods, there's a massive, like, blown up Yayoi Kusama painting on the building. Like, they have just, you know, said, here's our bank account details, drain the marketing budget. Speaking of Louis Vuitton, they are launching a baby line. On the 3rd of March, this will be available in select stores. And yes, if you want your tiny child to be in little LV monogram baby grows, you now have that option. But also they are including things like um, Louis Vuitton soft toys, sort of keepsakes that, you know, hopefully, the because these aren't going to be cheap, the amount that you spend on them means that it will last a long time and that they won't just sort of throw up on it and grow out of it in a week. Next collaboration, we have got Loewe and Studio Ghibli. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? I've never known. Either way, it's a lovely word to say. They have, th this has been an ongoing partnership that Loewe has had with the Japanese animation studio. This year, the theme, the movie that they're focusing on is Howl's Moving Castle. This is going to be ready to wear bags, accessories. I believe the pre-sale will start on the 2nd of February and the website will launch on the 1st. Also, just so you have knowledge of this, so I don't have to keep this to myself, J.W. Anderson, uh, in his men's show, and I'm sure they'll be available for women's as well, there are frog clogs and there is a frog bag. As we know, the pigeon clutch, there's gonna be a frog. So, I don't know, maybe J.W. Anderson just wants to produce a zoo of bags that you can collect over time, we shall see. Moving into hot new items. Dior has launched their newest bag. This is called the 9522. Why is it called the 9522? Well, the Lady Dior bag was created in 1995 and apparently this bag was created in 2022. And so, 9522. This is, yep, a variation of the Lady Dior, Dior's most iconic bag. We've seen them sort of try to do tweaks on this bag in recent years with something like the D-Joy. Key design features of this bag, she does have a bit more of a relaxed feel. The sides pinch in and you kind of close it using this metal clasp that sort of, you know, is on the inside of the bag to pull the sides in. And I'm, you, you know, or you can have them out if you want, I don't know. The metal's a handle. Uh, the metal's a handle! The handle's a metal! So, I mean, the Lady Dior has always sort of had that rigidity in the handle anyway. This does give a bit more of a, I don't know, a sort of hardware-heavy edge. Um, this comes in white and black currently, but the hardwares are gold, silver and gun metal, I believe. And I also think that they're doing three sizes in this. Metal handles do make the bag heavy, keep that in mind. Not to say I was one of the first to talk about this, but um, I don't know, I'll grab onto any accolade I can. The YSL officially launched their, well, Saint Laurent officially launched their takeaway box. It is in black, it's in beige, it's cool, it's fun, it's novelty. I have been through a little bit of turmoil as to whether or not to get this bag. I have currently settled on I'm not because I have three bags that I need to pick up when I'm in the UK, right? And like one more, like, it's, it's like, let me at least get those three first and have a bit of time with them and then let's think about other bags, you know? Either way, it's great. Now, these are readily available online. I know I've been to some stores and they've like, we've got a waiting list. So if you're dealing with that, go online, they're there. They're also on Louise of Hiroma and things like this. This I thought was interesting and I had to tell you about. Um, Birkin shopping bags. So let me get this right. X, Y, L, K. I don't know if there's a way to pronounce that. If so, let me know. So they make these, I believe he's, he's Filipino, he makes these reusable shopping bags that have Birkins printed on them. You can get a Himalayan, you can get an Oth 
just rich and exotics and whatever and limited edition versions and it's just it's just a reusable shopping bag so that uh, you can flex on all the other people at, uh, at the food shop and uh, it's very much a parody it's very much a spoof I found it very interesting that threads have sort of spotlighted this brand and they're all like selling out he has drops it, it, it gives me sort of like a telfar -y vibe but not but not really you understand what I mean either way I think it's quite fun very tongue-in-cheek uh, interesting along the lines of something like the Meta Birkins like oh is this also a grey area I've got no idea I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it have an amazing morning afternoon or evening wherever you are and in the words of my father if you've enjoyed it tell your friends if you haven't keep your mouth shut I'll see you on my next video Mwah. bye guys